Hi, welcome to Master RHJ series by Geek97. I am Dhananjay Kumar. So this is part one of this series and in this part we will try to understand that why you really need RHJs. I will take a very small example and try to show you that in what kind of scenario RxJs is very useful and very handy for you as a developer. So for that what I have done, I have created a HTML and this is pure HTML JavaScript CSS application. It does not have any framework such that Angular or React in it. It is pure uh, HTML, CSS and JavaScript based application and we'll try to learn concepts of RxJs without using any framework, at least in uh, some parts of this series. So here I have two buttons and two div and as these buttons suggest display product and update product and we are displaying those products at two places in this div and in this div. Uh, now when you are at this point if you run this application it should look like this it has a display product button and update product button and I'm calling the part one the top div as consumer one and the bottom div as consumer two and I'll use this term uh, repeatedly consumer to explain you the concept right now when you click off uh, on these buttons you get nothing but uh, uh, but uh, some alert so here it is now let us go ahead and try to understand that why RxJS is useful. So for that what I have done uh, here let me go and create one object called product and this object has a title property and a price property. All right. So this is our data, this product object, and we got to display this data inside uh, inside uh, these two consumers, consumer one div and consumer two div. Very simply, what we can do, we can say that uh, consumer one div dot inner HTML is equal to JSON dot stringify and product. And then in the same way, you can say consumer two div and inner.html is set to json.stringify uh, your product. At this point, when you run the application, you should be able to get this title and book. Now, what is happening in this scenario, try to understand that product is like a source and there are two consumer of that product, consumer one and consumer two. And they are uh, we are pulling the information from there and putting it into these consumers which we are uh, doing in line number 12 and line number 13. So here product is source and these two divs are consumers. Now let's go to this uh, update button and let us say that uh, we update a price of product and for that let's say let updated price is equal to it starts with 300. And here you are saying that updated price is equal to updated price plus 100 and then product dot price is equal to updated price. So what is happening here that we are changing the state of the source here this product it changed right here in line number 25 and keep in mind that this source product has two consumers in line number 14 and line number 15. So that product object has two consumers div, uh, consumer one div and consumer two div. Now due to some external click state of this source is changed right here. Now what is happening when you run this and before that uh, let's try to console log product here. So here you see that uh, now when you run this application and let me clean this, you see that uh, uh, due to initial state these two consumer has the information title book price 200 and title book price 200. Now when you click on update product the state of source is being changed which you can see here now the product has price value equal to 800 but the consumers are not notified for that. Consumers has no idea that the source state has been changed, the value inside source has been changed. And this is how uh, normal programming works. This is how pull approach works. 
in the normal programming in the pull approach it is responsibility of these consumers consumer one and consumer two is to go and find out where the state of source where the information inside source object has been changed or not if they are not doing their responsibility they would not get the updated data as you see in this uh, example now we have a display product so let's go here uh, to display product button and here we can say okay we'll again we'll just take this again and put it here so now what we are doing here uh, it should solve our problem right here and this update product product is being updated the source is updated now when you click on this display product actually you are pulling information from the source and you pull the information and right now you have that updated information inside this consumers so again product is updated again this these consumers are lagging behind until they don't pull the information from the source you click on this display and you get the updated data this is how pull approach works uh, this in the pull approach always the responsibility to get the state of the source lies uh, on the consumers here i have taken example of uh, object it could be a function it could be a iterate generator and we would come to that now how we can solve that how rxjs solve this problem so rxjs works on the push approach right now our application is in following pull approach so these consumers has to pull the information from the source now in rxjs what would happen in the push approach that this source would be uh, capable enough to push the information to notify all its subscriber or its consumers whenever there are some changes inside it and how you can make this product as a, a special type of object which is capable to notify in rxjs you do that using observables you can create observables in various ways uh, one is observable observable dot create uh, another is using various subjects here i'm going to use subject and i'll say let product dollar is new subject and i have already uh, imported subject from rxjs in line number one all right now we would wrap this product inside this product observable and for that what we are going to do that uh, that when user clicks on update button we would say product observable dot next so always it emits next data on the next function and here we'll pass this value product and as of now in line number 31 this product is updated with the updated price so this is simplest way you can create a special type of object which can push information to its subscriber when is there any changes in that so whenever this line would be executed it will notify all its subscribers all right now what we are going to do to use an observable you got to subscribe to that and you can do that like this so here product dollar dot subscribe and it takes an observer and that observer again is an object which has data uh, the data you are uh, pushing and error and complete we'll cover that in uh, other part of this series as of now just take data and right now this data is representing this product so we are subscribing here and here we can say that so this line number line number 22 would get executed whenever there is some changes in product observable and here we are saying consumer one deep dot inner html json dot stingify data so let me again uh, walk you through what i'm doing i created an observable here means this should able to notify to its consumer and then on the update of the product we are uh, emitting the updated product from that observable which is happening in line number 37 then in line number 20 line number 21 we are subscribing to the observable and this code line number anything between 21 and 25 would be called whenever there is some changes in product observable whenever there is a, this next method is called 
and we know that if this is called means there is some change in data so we are updating it uh, the consumer one div right here inside that subscribe now let us see the behavior of this application one thing keep in mind that inside this subscribe i'm not updating consumer two div i'm only updating consumer one div so right now we are here run this clear this you see that you have title book price 200 title book price 200 when you click on update product what would happen product would get updated and observable would emit the next data and observable would emit next data and that next data is being subscribed by consumer one but not being subscribed not is is subscribed and consumer one is being updated but consumer two is not updated there so when you do update product you see that you don't have to call display product automatically it is working fine and you are getting updated data and since it is not inside that subscribe uh, it is not getting notified and you are getting you have to click on display product to get the updated value so this is update product display product like that to fix that let's move this also here all right and then what i'm going to do i'm going to get rid of this display product display button completely so we won't have display button anymore in our application so comment this here and and also let's comment this and then comment this now we don't have display button we are not pulling information right now our application looks like this and keep in mind that these uh, consumers are uh, have one source product and when we click on that update product that source is being updated and since that is an observable it is capable enough to notify and and we are then subscribing to that change and updating these dom elements and this is working perfectly fine this is the power of rxjs that here if if a state of source changes it can notify to all its consumer and you can you can have this kind of application without writing any extra code any extra function call or asking user to click here and there this is called reactive programming this is rxjs so i want you to rewatch this video and try to understand that what kind of problem a basic problem problem rxjs solves and I will see you uh, in the next part of this Master RxJS series. Thank you so much for watching it. And please do not forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you.